My name is Guy Courtin, and my title is Vice President of Industry Solutions for Fashion and Retail at GT Nexus. You know, the Internet of Things is absolutely becoming a reality, and, and, and what's, what's funny at some point is that uh, the Internet of Things has actually been around for a while in manufacturing in particular. Um, it just never had a cool name. Now all of a sudden we have a cool name, it's out there and everybody wants to jump all over it. But the reality of the Internet of Things is that we have seen a confluence really, a, a perfect storm if you will, of, of factors such as uh, Moore's Law of reducing uh, computation power, uh, the connectivity issue, right? We have 3G, 4G, now 5G, we have Wi-Fi, super Wi-Fi, things of that nature, and we have the cloud. So those three things where the cloud is able to store this data and, and actually do some computation on it in real time, uh, we have the ability to put sensors on a lot of different things, and we have the, comp the communication ability of these sensors. So I think IoT is really taking off because of that, right? We all remember, especially in retail, about 15 years ago when Walmart told everybody to put RFID and everything, that was really sort of the first start of IoT. Really barcoding, if you go back to the 70s, is the first start of IoT. But because of these technologies, we're starting to see it where companies are able to adopt it and actually leverage it. And we're seeing a lot of things in terms of IoT and manufacturing in logistics, right? Where we're improving existing business processes. So take asset management, for example. Uh, there's a company out on the West Coast that sells uh, wine in kegs, and kegs are their assets. And with IoT, they can now tra track those kegs throughout their network. Right? We're seeing companies in logistics being able to track containers uh, through the ocean, through ports, things of that nature. We're seeing even hospitals being able to track their assets within the hospital itself and be able to understand much better where are their assets. So these are the things that we've already been doing. IoT is just making them more efficient. Right, we also know a lot about the IoT when it comes to predictive maintenance. For example, GE, you know, one of the famous IoT sort of uh, champions out there, uh, is putting sensors on their locomotives, on their wind turbines, on their airplane engines, and the amount of data that's being thrown off, they're able to anticipate when a break is going to happen. Right, for example, even like Caterpillar does this, where they know uh, they have a, a, a dump truck in the jungles of Burma and they can monitor it and understand, hey, this is overheating a little bit ahead of time, so to speak. Maybe we have a problem. We can anticipate it. We can dispatch product and technician ahead of time. So these are the business cases we're seeing today, the near-term business cases for IoT. I think what's exciting about it is where does this go in the future, right? How does this lay down the groundwork for some future uh, interesting things with IoT and with the data that's coming off of it. So IoT is absolutely hot. It is, there's a reason for it. I think that it's a perfect storm, if you will, of technologies and enablers to make IoT more accessible. Uh, now we're just trying to figure out what are the business cases, right? The near-term ones are very much around things like asset management, predictive maintenance, uh, inventory tracking. Uh, what's exciting is what does this lead to down the road? Like every technology, like every change, right? In the early stages, there's a lot of disbelief. There's a lot of questioning because there's gonna be some failures, right? I take the example of websites, right? If you look back in the early 90s or late 90s when, when the internet exploded and everybody had to have a website, um, you know, there was a false, false hope that everything was gonna be conducted through the web, right? And that we're gonna do all kinds of e-commerce or CRM, all this through the web. And a lot of companies came and went and we know the dot-com bust, right? We saw that happen. And a lot of people at the time said, well, this is no longer what it holds out to be. This internet thing is, is a fad, if you will, right? You know, I remember a joke that uh, B2C and B2B became back to consulting, back to banking, right? Because again, it was felt like this is not, you know, the hype has been all way overblown. Fast forward to today, and I would say the internet is absolutely, and the web is absolutely an integral part to all our businesses, whether it's B2B, B2C, whatever it is. So I would argue it's the same thing with IoT. Right? Yes, RFID was sort of a false start, but I could go even further back, as I mentioned, to barcoding. Right? In the 70s, when Wrigley put a barcode on their, I think their bubble gum, that was this beginning of this traceability done through machines and things of that nature. Um, today, we see barcodes everywhere. We're seeing RFID because the prices have come down. So I would say there is a lot of hype, and some of it might be overblown. But we're going to see, I guarantee you, well, maybe I shouldn't guarantee you, but I think in 10 years we'll see where IoT and this connectivity that we have is taken for granted and is an integral part of our businesses in a whole host of ways. IoT, first and foremost, to me, is just another form of data. Now, what you do with it, you're absolutely right, is, is, um, is where we get the most value. 
So today, the easy things we just talked about is things such again, asset management, things that are uh, that we're doing already on an active basis that now we can add a new layer of technology and a new efficiency to that we otherwise couldn't. I think the challenge for everybody with IoT is to figure out, okay, that's what we could do today. That's where I can convince my CFO to invest money in. What do I do down the road? What do I do with this new form of data? This new form of data that is gonna to come to me at a different pace, in a different format. Right? What does that mean for me? Whether I'm in heavy industry, aerospace and defense, biotech, retail, CPG, whatever it may be. Right? Those are the questions that I think the smart ones today are starting to think about down the road because they're planning for it in the sense of, if I start doing things today that can address these sort of backwards looking issues that I had to deal with anyways, but how do I position myself for then to take advantage or to open up new business models that are gonna come in two, three, four, five years? That is the, the challenge. And I wish I had the answers, and, and, if, and if I did, I would write a book and make lots of money off it, but I think there's opportunities for the smart companies out there to open their minds up to say, hey, if and when I get access to this kind of information, and if and when I can also then layer on top of it some smart analytics and some smart insights and glean from it some actionable items, what can I do with it? Can I perform different things for my customers? Can I service them better? Do I have better demand signals? Um, can I anticipate things better? Can I change my business models? For example, we're seeing this already. I mentioned GE, but Rolls-Royce is the same thing. Rolls-Royce builds airplane engines. They now put sensors on them. So at first it was about predictive maintenance and asset management. They're now able to change their business models in terms of, of charging, right? So they don't sell British Airway an airplane engine. They sell you the thrust, right? So you're paying, G, you're paying sorry, Rolls-Royce for the thrust. How far did you go? How efficient was it? Things of that nature. There's a crane company in Holland called Krona Cranes. Same thing. They don't sell you the crane. They lease you the crane or the lift. So how much merchandise did you lift? How much tonnage? How often? When? Things of that nature. Why? Because now they can monitor that in real time and be able to truly bill you, right? Like we get a bill for electrical use. Now I can start doing these things. And this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of how IoT will change in the future our business models and how we do things.